Hello everybody, this is Sunday on this channel where we talk about all things sci-fi and fantasy and today we have to talk about the series Agatha All Along, so let's jump right into it. Alright, so with Halloween season upon us, I thought we would talk a little bit about mostly horror stuff, but it is Sci-Fi Sunday on our channel where we do talk about all things sci-fi and fantasy, so what better thing to talk about than something that kind of blends both of those together. That is Agatha All Along, the miniseries from Disney Plus that is also a Marvel event. This series is at its heart still kind of sci-fi fantasy and still kind of horror because it does deal with witches, a staple of Halloween. Now this isn't going to be a spoiler free video. I will try to keep it a little vague. I'm not going to spoil every detail for you. I just don't want to promise you a non-spoiler video when that is not going to be what this is. This is actually going to be me looking at the series and sort of summarizing what we have in these first two episodes. And then I will give you my thoughts on what I think is going to happen with the rest of the series. Agatha All Along is the spinoff of the Marvel series WandaVision, which aired on Disney+, Plus. in case you didn't know. And what it entails is the character of Agatha Harkness, who is a witch in the Marvel Universe, often portrayed as the villain. In fact, I can't recall ever having a time in the comic books where she wasn't necessarily a villain, but then I haven't read all of her stories either. But she is an interesting character in the series because in the original WandaVision series, she played the nosy neighbor who constantly was all up in Wanda's business, no matter what sitcom era it was in. Because if you remember the WandaVision TV series, it took place in several decades with it mocking different television shows that were popular in those particular decades, each episode having kind of its own theme. As our hero tried to escape from the prison that was of her own making. And that's kind of the thing. In WandaVision, Wanda's escaping from a prison that she shouldn't have to try so hard to escape from. But the reason as to why everything is the way it is, is being kept a secret. Well, if you watch the series, you know the answer to that secret. And you know kind of what ended up happening to Wanda and to the character of Agatha. This series picks up Three years later, three years have gone by and Agatha is still trapped in that same nightmare, in that same prison that Wanda had built all around herself. All right, so Katherine Hahn reprises her role as Agatha in the series, and she does an amazing job because when we first meet her in the series, she doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know that she is Agatha Harkness. And it takes a body of a Jane Doe popping up for her to suddenly start to awaken from this spell. And that's kind of where the series starts. She's just a detective in this particular story. I'm sure every day or every couple days it seems to change all around them and they don't know. Just like in the original WandaVision TV series that kind of changed from day to day. And that's kind of where she's at. Except in this particular time, she is a detective. And there's been a homicide. And this homicide is of a Jane Doe. And she suddenly becomes obsessed with this case because she finds a locket. It doesn't really explain where this comes from, nor would I explain it to you if it did. This is probably a very important thing to remember because it seems like the second she sees this, she flips a switch. She suddenly starts to become less involved in this whole detective part of it, even though she fights it. And this series is starting off very good because... 
While all this is going on, she also has a robber that enters her house. And this robber that enters her house is a teenager who she then tries to arrest and thinks that he might have something to do with the murder. So, of course, she arrests him, only to find out that everything she thought she knew was a lie. She awakens from the spell. And this teenager she thought was robbing her may be her only hope of finding a way out. Because apparently, there's more to him than meets the eye. Now, she also runs into someone who seemingly knows who she is. And this person will play a part later on. Now, the cool thing about what they do here is that the teen actually tells her he wants her to take him to the witch's road and she says there is no such thing but of course we know that Agatha knows that there is because there is an entire summary for the series that got laid out before it ever aired talking about the witch's road and what it actually meant. So she starts to tell him that they need to recruit some witches. This takes us into the second episode where they are recruiting people to possibly go on the witch's road with a whole new enemy in the Salem 7 chasing after her. Now, I don't know too much about the Salem 7. I just know that these are apparently the enemies of the show and they want Agatha dead. She has apparently wronged them in the past and we probably will find out more about that as time goes on. Now, that's kind of the breakdown of the first two episodes. I told you I was going to keep it kind of vague, so I didn't tell you a lot of details, just didn't want to say it was a spoiler free review when I know some of those details are kind of spoilerish. But let's look at what this entails now. The teen is a very important character because a lot of people are thinking that this is Wiccan, that this is Wiccan, aka William Billy Kaplan Altman, which is essentially Wanda's child one of Wanda's twins, and he showcases all sorts of powers and can do all sorts of magic. So it kind of looks like this is him, and I think this is a great casting choice if it is. Now, we don't know that this is him for absolute sure. They haven't really said one way or another. It would make sense. Some of the things that he says in the series and some of the events that kind of happen seem to kind of collaborate that this could in fact be Wiccan that we're looking at and he could have something to do with her finding the road maybe to betray her and maybe get revenge for her sort of messing up his childhood because we know what happened at the end of WandaVision and it sort of led us into the multiverse of madness with Doctor Strange, that Wanda was looking for her children. This could be a version of one of her twins coming back to kind of fix that problem. Now, I, I like that theory, and it would be perfect casting. I think that he is definitely going to turn out to be Wiccan, and that he's going to play a part in the finale of this season. There has been rumors about this season that Wanda will be making a cameo herself, and that could be kind of interesting as well. But we don't know if that is actually the case or not. We don't know if she will be making an appearance. We do know, however, that this series deals with the events after WandaVision and that it kind of is meant to explain how Agatha Harkness is going to escape the prison that she was left in at the end of the series. And that's kind of what it is, a prison. So she's left there and she has to figure out how to escape. And that's what this series is going to be, her future in the MCU. So I actually think it's plausible this could be Wiccan trying to make sure that she's not a part of the MCU going forward and kind of trying to make sure that she has stopped once and for all. 
I think the events of this world will take us into Battle World. I think it's very plausible. This is going to be a big deal because the heart of Battle World is all of these different realities merging together to ultimately become one and becoming the end of the multiverse saga. And that's got to really fit. I definitely think that the events of this are going to turn out to be important, even if it's in a small way, to the events of Battle World and Secret Wars. It's definitely going to make that fit. Agatha's mom is going to play a big part in the show as well. Apparently, she is one of these Salem Seven. That's what I've been told. That remains to be seen. I think those rumors are true, though. I think that's been confirmed. And the remaining of these Salem Seven are hunting her down because ultimately Agatha did them wrong in the past. The show also includes Aubrey Plaza playing this detective in the first episode who has a bit of importance throughout the series and you probably already know it has been in some interviews they have talked about this but I'm not going to tell you about that character here but also returning is Deborah Jo Rump and she actually was in the original series too she was in WandaVision and several of these people are returning from WandaVision, so you kind of get to see the first episode, some of them come back. I don't think that they play an importance past the first episode, except for maybe Deborah Jo Romp. I do actually think that Deborah Jo Romp is going to play a major part in the show, more than what we think we know, just based on her part in the show. But that's the thing. This has a lot of cool people in it. A lot of the cast is returning. And I just don't think we're going to see a lot of them past the first episode. And if we do, it's going to not make them as important as it will Deborah Jo Rupp. And after you watch the first episode and the second episode, you'll kind of see why I say this. But the, the series looks pretty good so far. I honestly think that it's going to come down to Agatha having to stop her mother from destroying the world, thus making her kind of possibly a hero of the series, at least for the time being, at which point she's going to still want revenge on the Scarlet Witch. She'll manage to escape at the end of the show, or they'll appear like maybe she could be dead and we'll get some sort of idea that she's not. And then she will pop up again in Secret Wars. That's honestly what I think is going to happen. I don't know if this is exactly what will happen. But I expect to see her on Battle World. I expect to see her in that movie. So I think that's where we're heading. But overall, I, I love this series so far. I've heard a lot of really negative reviews about the series, but I actually like it. I think it's a lot of fun. It is something that kind of is different, and it has a lot of potential. I want to see where this series goes. I'm already kind of hooked. I give this series actually... 4 out of 5 stars, and the reason I'm giving it 4 out of 5 stars is probably because I'm a little bit biased. I am a huge Katherine Hahn fan. I love everything she's in. I think she's brilliant. And, I mean, other than that, Aubrey Plaza's in this, and she's really good, too. And then you have a cast of characters that are entertaining to watch that I want to see where they go. So when you have the cast like you do here and you have the characters that you want to see where they go, and I definitely want to see where all of these characters go at the end of this. I want more of these characters just even after watching the first two episodes. And that makes it fun. That's why I rank it four out of five stars because I think if you give this series a chance and kind of turn your brain off and allow yourself to enjoy the insanity that the series is obviously going to be, you might just find you're going to have a lot of fun. But if you have seen this series, I want to know what you think of the first two episodes. I want to hear from you. Try to keep it kind of spoiler free because we 
sort of don't want to spoil a whole lot of what actually happened, but I do think that this was a lot of fun, and I want to hear from you guys. What were your thoughts? What do you think this series is going to be like going forward? And do you think that the teenage boy is actually Wiccan? As always, we definitely want to hear from you guys. Make sure you're leaving us that comment in the comment box below letting us know what you think. Also, don't forget to share this video with all of your friends. They're going to want to be a part of the conversation as well. Then don't forget to hit that like button. It's free. It helps the channel, and we really do appreciate it. Miko says we need more subscribers, and look at this adorable face. You don't want to disappoint Miko, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell while you're down there so you don't miss a single video we do. Then, friends, at the end of the day, I know it, you know it, and Miko knows it. Fandom is family.